Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, I want to just be 100% transparent today. I struggled with posting and mostly because I was like, I didn't learn a lesson. I was home all day. I wasn't tested on anything and I really didn't feel, I wasn't feeling today. Um, and you hear me talk a lot about God. You hear me talk a lot about prayer. And obviously this whole journey came from a authentic place of spiritual growth and development. And so one thing, um, that re I require in my own life is a deep revelation of what God is saying. Revelation. What is that? <laughs> it just means uh, some spiritual insight into what God is saying in his word and in his scripture. So today, boop, 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 boop. <laughs> I just want to read something to you guys that I um, read in the Bible today that definitely resonates with my situation. Um, and it helps me to gain more instruction and perspective. I think it's really easy to lose sight of why you're doing something when you're doing it. I'm um, just hoping to get to the end. And we talked a little bit about that yesterday, but I really want to read this to you and I hope that it helps you um, as well as it helped me. So forgive while I look down. Um, I'm actually going to read it from an iPad because homegirl be blind a little bit. Um, and I'm reading from Mark 10 and I'm just going to read a couple verses um, starting at the 17th verse. It says, and as he was setting out on his journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? So this is a rich man talking to Jesus Christ. And Jesus says to him, why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. You know the commandment. Don't murder, don't commit adultery, don't steal, don't lie, don't defraud, and honor your parents. And he said to him, teacher, all these things have I kept from my youth. And Jesus looked at him, loved him, and said to him, you lack one thing. Go sell all that you have and give all of it to the poor. Everything you treasure, give up and you will have treasure in heaven, and then you can come and follow me. I feel like, oh my gosh, I feel like the rich man. I feel like God is telling me, sell everything you have, give up everything that you have, and follow me. And we're like, well, God, why? Why don't you want us to have things? Why do we have to give up everything for you? And when I was praying that, or when I was reading that, Jesus said, well, if you want what I have, you have to do what I've done. And so if you want all of the good things of God, the blessings and the power and the great anointing, you have to do what Jesus did to be in that place. And he gave, he gave his love, he's giving his time. God gave his son for us, but also... I realized um, the young man, when he was going to Jesus and he walked away, the rest of that scripture says that he walked away disheartened and went on his way. So he walks away from Jesus unhappy with that answer that Jesus gave him and definitely not willing to do the instruction that Jesus gave him. I think sometimes we as people ask questions or put ourselves in arenas because we feel like we belong there. We feel like we've arrived. So I'm not going to go to my class reunion until I have a husband, until I'm wearing, I'm Gucci down to the socks, like all of these things. Because when I get there, I want to feel like I arrived. I want to feel boss. I want to feel like I'm in that position where people can idolize me. We operate in pride that way. And so I think what Jesus was really doing here or what shocked the man when he was talking to Jesus is, oh, master, what do I have to do to um, gain eternal life? He thought that Jesus was going to say, oh, you've already got it. Because remember, um, in what I read, he simply said, oh, well, I've kept all those commandments from my youth. And Jesus is like, yeah, I know that. But I wasn't done. There's one more thing. There's something in you that you think is bigger than me. And that man was not ready. He wasn't ready to receive what God was saying. He wasn't ready to give up what he really had. I feel like in this journey, 
I don't know if I was ready to give up my most prized possession. I don't know if I was ready for it, but I'm really grateful that I did it anyway. I don't know the end of this. I don't know where this will take me, but I'm sure that as I have given up what I thought was so great and grand in my life, the biggest, most important thing where my heart was, my treasure, as giving that up, I am certain that whatever I'm going to fall into, whatever I'm going to run into is going to be so much better than what I've ever could imagine. The Bible says that God has thoughts that he thinks towards us and there are thoughts that we would prosper. It's a plan for us to prosper. It also says that, you know, our ears haven't heard it. Our eyes haven't seen it. It hasn't even gotten into our heart or in our mind what the Lord has for us. I'm just really chasing what God has for me. And I don't want to be guilty of being the kind of person that goes to a space thinking that I've arrived, thinking I'm bossed up and I'm really mm, got to get knocked all the way back down. So yeah, take a look at it for yourself. I encourage everyone, if you are watching this video, um, listening to this content, I encourage you to go pick up a Bible, any version, and look at Mark 10. I just read to you the verses 17 to 22, around 23. Um, and look at that and see if you see yourself. Is there something that you have in your life that you think is bigger and more important than God? And if so, he just might ask for it. He might ask for it for a season, meaning he may say, let me see if you're willing to give it up and then give you a ram in the bush like he did with Abraham. Or he might ask for it permanently because it's blocking you from the better that is really warranted to you, that he really planned for you. And he's the master of our lives. So we don't really know what's good for us until he tells us. He Even when the man calls Jesus good master, he's like, there's no one good but God. So, and that's, we could dissect that another time. But um, thanks for hanging out with me tonight um, on another day in this crazy journey with this crazy girl. Please don't forget to comment and like and please subscribe. You see this, guys? This is my favorite piece in my house, by the way. Thankful and blessed. It helps me to, reminds me to be thankful and that because I'm blessed, um, just wanted to share that with you so off topic but it's okay because I'm crazy and you know you will learn soon enough that one of my favorite words is whimsical because that is what I am anyways like comment subscribe check your heart check yourself and be open to what God is trying to teach you about yourself I love you much God loves you most talk soon